Hi and welcome to episode 66 of The Morning After from Engadget. My name is Matt Smith and this week we'll be talking about how Android gets the attention it deserves from Google. We'll talk about how AI is reviving a legendary author ready to teach us how to write the next great murder mystery and some less good AI news because normally that is always the case with AI news. Let's get started. Now, Google I.O. is usually where the company reveals what's happening with its smartphone OS for the next 12 months. But this year, Android is getting its very own thing. Yes, Google will deep dive into the future of Android in a special edition of the Android show on May 13th. That's a week ahead of I.O. in earnest. The company said people have been asking for more ways to learn about how the Android experience is changing. Who are these people? Google says that it has so many new things to share that it's making a very special episode of The Android Show. That's its long-running, presumably thrilling, YouTube series that's predominantly for devs. Having said all that, Google says Android will still feature at I.O. with even more special announcements and surprises. I think we'll be the judge of that. BBC Maestro offers classes and courses similar to Masterclass, but in a way that's way more British. Its latest tutor, however, died in 1976. Agatha Christie has been digitally revived to teach us how to write murder mysteries with presumably no reference to smartphones and the internet. Christie's likeness is composited through a blend of licensed images, limited footage and past audio recordings. This was then fused with recorded footage of actor Vivian Keane who performs the words of Christie on video. At a launch event that I was invited to with enough champagne to fill the Nile. Well, not quite. Uh, I got to briefly watch some of the lessons. Now I'm not ready to pen a 50,000 word page turner, but it's a pretty convincing facsimile. There's still a glint of uncanny valley, of course. I think there's something to do with the eyes. But even the BBC Maestro CEO, Michael Levine, noted that since the project's inception just a few years ago, the technology has evolved so quickly that the team was able to do even more than it first thought possible. Now, a writing course presented by an AI augmented tutor seems like a particularly risky choice. A lot of writers, editors, and authors are facing AI tools that reduce job opportunities or absorb their writing and IP without permission to train all of those many AI models. Having said all that, it's not the worst AI news of the week. A group of Swiss researchers covertly ran a months-long unauthorized experiment on Reddit. They used AI-generated comments to test the persuasiveness of large language models on the Change My View subreddit, according to its moderators. In the draft paper, researchers described how they even attempted to personalize its replies based on information gleaned from the original poster's prior Reddit history. Now, the AI reportedly took on numerous identities in comments during this experiment, including a sexual assault survivor, a trauma counselor specializing in abuse, and a black man opposed to Black Lives Matter. Reddit, of course, wasn't having it. Reddit's chief legal officer, Ben Lee, wrote that the researchers' actions were deeply wrong on both a moral and legal level. Yeah, that's that sounds pretty accurate. This week's awful AI idea is Group Hug, a startup that is developing an app to generate memes from WhatsApp group chats using AI. The company aims to use generative AI to extract deeper value from WhatsApp groups, uh, with the business aim, at least, of summarizing long conversations and pulling out key details. They have apparently secured one and a half million in pre-seed funding and told TechCrunch that they think they've cracked AI humor. Now, most group chat memes in my experience, or at least the ones I create, are either incredibly niche or intentionally crap. This is going to be really bad. I can't wait. Now onto the other big tech headlines of the last few days. First up, Microsoft is raising the prices on the Xbox Series S and Series X. The two consoles will now start at $380 and $550 respectively, and most folks will probably decide to buy a PlayStation. A speedrunner managed to reach Breath of the Wild's ending sequence on the Switch 2. Yes, on a console that isn't even out yet, a speedrunner was able to crack the game within the demo playtime limits at Nintendo's Switch 2 showcase in Tokyo. And finally, over at Engadget.com, we test the best pizza ovens. No pizza puns or quips, it's just our pick of the best pizza ovens. I mean, the weather's getting better, let's, let's have a pizza party, come on, invite me over. And ending on that high, that was your morning after. Thanks once again for watching along. Make sure to check out the full stories and the very latest news over at Engadget.com. I hope to see you the same time next week, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Bye.